Welcome back, folks. This is uh, Lesson 58. Uh, I thought I'd continue with the sky theme, and uh, let's do a little one here of crepuscular rays. How to introduce those. And I want to keep it simple, just the, the, the colours of raw sienna, or ochre, ultramarine, ultramarine and burnt them mixed together in, in quite a strong mix. So we've got our colours, and what I've done on the actual sheet, it's what we're painting on our sheet, is I've put some, a couple of suggested mountain types here, or hills. That's the, the, the sea level there, is that one? <coughs> and, and gone around the back there to keep it protected. So I can just do a like on, on the sky, and then we'll, we can sort it out from there. So let, let's get cracking. There's your colours, I'll just move them, and then we can see what the full picture is. Right, I think the first thing we do is put some, I'll put some raw sienna on this. That's, that's per the first mix. Let's just have a touch on this. Not all over, just this, it's not west of the sky, it's just, it's just, a, just painting it on. Right, wash the brush out, and let's go in with a touch of a touch of blue now, the the ultramarine. Stick a touch of that in there. And then I want to put in some strong stuff, some some of this the the double stuff the. Ultramarine and burnt umber. Let's go in strong with this, shall we? Quite strong here. And I like that, uh, I want to leave a touch of blue up that, that corner. It's, it's sort of a, a, a spot of hope. It's, it's the, the sun's on its, on its way. With a bit of blue sky there. I'll just put a touch more blue in there just to line it up again. Just up there. Introduce it back in. So the, the, this looks like the, the nice day is nearly here. <coughs> And then, of course, to grab out the crepuscular rays, we, we want to sort of shaft them down. The sun is, is, is obviously way above the clouds and that. And if we get a bit of a sort of sponge or, or tissue paper or whatever, and just try and try and pull some uh, some some directional light and lines down across the paper. Like this sort of thing. In fact, I can do it better with paper, I think. I'm not some coming out of that that cloud there, I'm just up there. Right, I think I'll go a bit in, in a bit more of the dark sky on top of these rays. So some of it's coming from behind the clouds, that's what I'm trying to do. A bit more colour into there. Yeah, that's it a bit darker. It's not a nice day, day to be out in on when you get a day like this. 
stikli stein. But they make dramatic looking pictures if you if you if you do this. You cannot be the touch of drama in your pictures. A bit more cloud in there. And then leaves the race alone. I think we can, we can, if I start fiddling with that, that's, that'll, that'll make it worse. Right, let's dry that up a little bit. Let's just use a little smaller brush now, and let's put in some this this. No, it's hardly you can see it now. This, this distant hill we've got here. Make that a bit. <coughs> Don't want it too strong. This. Same colours, no, don't complicate it. Then we're just we're flicking this distant hill, just pick it out from there. That's going down to the, really down to the water's edge there. All you need with that, and while I'm messing about, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm missing, I'm making the sky. It's a bit of messing about, but uh, I want to put a touch of alizarin in into that mix with this mix here. Just a touch of alizarin into it, and let's just introduce. I'm making this as I go along, folks. Sorry about that. Let's introduce a touch of. Distant headland across here. Even weaker than that. No detail, just a, a suggestion. It, it gives you where the, 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 the water's edge is. Right. Now, as you can see from that, that is paler than that. So therefore, that piece is further in the distance. So that's in the distance, this is coming towards us, and this one I want to make is stronger than that one, and bring it towards us. Then once I do that one, I'll take off the, 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 the uh, masking tape and uh, and see what we've got. Right, a bit more strength on that one. Stronger than that last one, it's got to be stronger than that last one. Aren't we? We shall see where it is, shall we? Here it comes. Let's overlap that one. Should just see a gradual change in, in colour on that. And down to the water's edge again. This is a quickie for you. You can't be the quickie. Get that blocked in. I said that this shape, it doesn't matter, it's just whatever you, whatever you would like to make it. But it might be nice to, with a clean brush, just lift out some of this, this, this colour on, on, on this, this thing to... Just where perhaps the crepuscular rays are catching it. Instead of just flat colour. It also de defines the mountain a little bit, or the hills. Just a clean, clean brush, and take it out. Keep, keep washing it. 
and taking it out. Might get a touch on that one at the back as well, just to lift some of that out there. Where it's just the, the crepuscular rays and just sunlight is just catching the, the edge of the, the hills. Bring it down there. That should be alright. If I do any more, I'm starting to fiddle. And I don't want it to be a fiddly sky, it's just a, a basic. I want to just teach the crepuscular rays and how to introduce them. Well, that seems dry now. Let's, let's uh, see if we can peel off some of this stuff here. We'll start with the bottom one. See what that gives us. I always like this bit because it's exciting, because you never know what you're going to get. But it's lovely. This is what makes painting so, so much interest. It's so good. There's a flick of the nail on that one. See what we've got. Yes, that's lovely. Nice clean, clean sea there. But we've got to, we've got to do something with this sea. We just can't leave it like that, can we? So I think the best thing to do. I wonder if I put something, something here as a, as a, as a focal point. Uh, the focal point, say, say on the third. I mean, I'm, what I want to, soon I want to do a lesson on on composition with you. Just a quick one for the beginners. Just to say, you know, the best way is to stand, or how to stand, not not yourself, but in the best position to stand to get your best painting. But but one of the things that just you do, you'd put this, if you put something just about here, I don't know what it is, but we'll put it just about here. That's that's on really on the third. It'll, it'll, it'll draw the eye to here, especially if I make it a bright colour. So that's what that's what I'm aiming at. But before all that. I want to get this sea sorted out first, and, and I want to get some sparkle on it by just doing a, a, a dry brush technique, and strong, strong colour, but dry brush. This has got to be really, really dry. Uh, let's see what we're using here. Might be a bit too big, that brush. <clears throat> I'm using a number 20 brush, by the way, most of the time, because I, I, I enjoy that. But I'm going to get a bit smaller now, just to see what this, see what we can do with this water. I don't want to overdo the water. And let's have a look, see what size brush I think. Oh, that number. That looks interesting. About a number ten. And then that'll do. Just sorry, this little bit here, but uh, about that. I still want it, want it to be right. Right. Let's make it quite a strong mix. This is the ultramarine. And the burnt umber. What colour we've got? That's a nice colour, <clears throat> but it's got a bit dry brush. Hardly any liquid on it, <clears throat> and I want to sort of drag it across or flick it across, missing the surface. Just, just flick like this, look. It's hitting and missing. A bit more dark into that, I think. It's too nice. Take up most of the strength. Yeah, that's better. <coughs> it 
it's a gentle stroke. The more gently you do it, the better your picture. Imagine you're caressing the dog. <laughs> well, or a beautiful woman. You've got to be gentle with it. Lovely and gentle. Mountains there. No heavy added mist there. Just, just the beautiful dry brush technique. And of course, near the front, you you probably get a, a stronger tone and, and less of the less of the sparkle. So we'll put a bit of bit of that in the foreground here. Just let's just block it a bit like this. That's it, and then when I start looking for things to do, take the brush off me, because I start fiddling then, and that's not what we do. Right, we talked about putting something in just here, didn't we? Just to give us a, a focal point, we need something. Let's, uh, what about a, let's say, uh, I don't know, a, 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 a small, small boat, just about here, as is, where this is. Put a bit of a mast in there, and then sort of a, a sail coming off it like this. Look, I'll paint it in, and, and we'll put probably I'll, I'll draw with the painting. That's probably the best idea. Then another sail coming down here, and a bit of a hull. Right, that'll do. I'll, I'll fiddle that on. Uh, now let's think of a nice bright colour to paint this. It's got to stand out, hasn't it? I think a red boat would be nice there. So red sails at least, or tan sails. That not not go over. But we'll do tan sails. And a good colour for tan, tan sails, is a colour called light red. And it makes lovely tan sails. So let's have a go with that and see how we go. See what it gives us. Right, so we've got this, I promise you, sail just here, something like this. Let's just hold it steady. Sail coming down there. One, put a little one sticking out the front here. One coming up to there. Right, let's go down to the base there. Where the other, where the other sail dropped down there. Call it the base. Then we'll put the hull in or something. But I want to put a bit of a uh, a mast in there. Let's tidy it up a little bit. A little bit of a mast. I think I might use you. Use Kellogg's credit card again. Get the right size. That's about right. Yeah, that'll do. Get a dark, dark colour for for that. Just anchor that one down. Here we go. The same colours, don't, don't start complicating it, just the same colours every time. Then once we get that done, we'll have a look at the hull. Ah, lovely, yes, that's it. Just flicking the light on it, if you like, that's lovely, that's just what I want. Not too much, no, no, a bit of a hole on the base. It'll have to be lighter than the sea to show up, so I think we'd better have a, let's see, I think, yeah, we'll have a, a red one, red one, red. Red will stand out, wouldn't it? A red sailing boat. Just 
just under here. And, and, cook, and the, the, just a little tip here, folks. I mean, it's always best if you're putting a, a, a boat in the very description, have it sailing into your picture and not out of it. Because if, if the, the, the boat is going that way, it's leaving the eye out of your painting, which you don't want. So every time that anyone looking at your paintings, you want to sort of make the eye or the viewer think that, ah, where's that boat going? You want be, what it wants to be going in, in towards, and perhaps I wonder what's around that, that headland there. I wonder if, how nice it'll be, lovely. But that way, it's oh, it's, it's off, and, and you've, you've you've lost your you've lost your viewer. So let's let's put a slight, just a shallow. Just a shallow impression of a boat there. Not, not, I don't want to do. I don't want to put anchor in and things like that. It's just, just a shallow impression of a tiny boat. It's, 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 it's now the inner there. It's, it's, but it's, it's a focal point to your painting. Without it, you've you, you've got you, you've got all, all your, your fundamental bits and pieces, but there's nothing for the eye to to rest on. And that's what this little thing's doing, hopefully. I want to put a bit of a mast out the front there, if I can. Not a mast, I mean a, a, the sticky out bit at the front. That's it. I don't do anything else with it. And that's it. So I think, just to recap on that, all, all we've done is... We, put, we, we painted the sky randomly uh, without water with raw sienna, then introduced the burnt, burnt umber and French ultramarine into a cloud room. A touch of French ultramarine up there because it makes the, 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 the sea is going to get better because the sun is coming. And the sun is behind that cloud there, and the shaft of right light is coming down onto the hillsides down to here. And, and of course, as I said, the, 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 the technical term is, is crepuscular rays. And the, the reason I know that is because I, I'm to write it. I was doing a, a, a lesson, a, a tuition on a, on a group of people one day that came to my home. And one chap, is, I, I recognised his face, I, didn't, I couldn't place him. I thought, has he been to a, a, a lecture I've done, or has he done this? Or, uh, anyway, I didn't pay. I, I, in the end, I'm, I'm just cheeky as... as uh, excuse me, where have I seen you before? And he says, oh, I'm the BBC weatherman. And I thought, well, blow me, of course he is. And I'd seen him most days. And what he did, which was nice on this course, because he, he, he was a lovely man. And with a little chat over a pint at night, the next day he did a lesson on, on clouds for us. Uh, various kinds of clouds and skies and that, and it, it was two hours of sheer magic, like like cumulus clouds, nimbus clouds, strata, oh, all sorts of stuff. I couldn't remember it all, but it was so so wonderful to to, to listen to him talk because he talked with such authority. You know, he knew what he was talking about. But if you're going to introduce some of them tips into your paintings, your paintings will improve all the time. So. Well, that, that, that's it for the day, folks. I think it, it, it's, it's a nice little short one. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, give us a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Any questions you have, I'm always welcome to, to hear them, and we'll take it from there. So, until next time, folks, it's goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>